Hello there, everyone. In this module, we'll be learning about central retinal vein occlusion. Let's begin with a quick introduction. Central retinal vein occlusion is a condition characterized by the blockage or compression of the central retinal vein, which is responsible for draining blood from the retina. Let's explore the key aspects of central retinal vein occlusion, including its types, risk factors, diagnosis, and treatment. Let's start with the classification. Central retinal vein occlusion can be classified into two main types, ischemic central retinal vein occlusion and non-ischemic central retinal vein occlusion. Ischemic central retinal vein occlusion accounts for approximately 25% of cases. It's characterized by a severe blockage of the central retinal vein, leading to a significant reduction in blood flow and oxygen supply to the retina. On the other hand, non-ischemic central retinal vein occlusion is more common, accounting for 75% of cases. In this type, the blockage of the central retinal vein is partial, allowing some blood flow to reach the retina. Next, let's go over the risk factors. There are several risk factors associated with central retinal vein occlusion that can increase the likelihood of developing this condition. These risk factors include the following. It is more commonly observed in older individuals. Chronic conditions like diabetes and hypertension, if not properly managed or controlled, can significantly elevate the risk of central retinal vein occlusion. Elevated levels of lipids in the blood can contribute to the development of central retinal vein occlusion. Elevated pressure within the eye, known as intraocular pressure, can increase the vulnerability to central retinal vein occlusion. Now, let's go over the clinical features of ischemic central retinal vein occlusion. Linear, flame-like hemorrhages are observed along the retinal vessels. These hemorrhages result from the backup of blood in the blocked veins. White patches, known as cotton wool spots, appear on the retina due to the infarction of the nerve fiber layer. Extensive retinal hemorrhages, accompanied by dilated veins, give the retina a reddish appearance, resembling a blood and thunder or a splash of tomato ketchup appearance. Within a span of 90 days, Neovascularization may occur as a response to the reduced blood flow, leading to the development of secondary glaucoma. Now we'll move on to the diagnosis. Diagnosing central retinal vein occlusion involves various techniques, one of which is optical coherence tomography. This imaging method allows for non-invasive and detailed visualization of the retina's cross-sectional images. It can assess specific characteristics, such as macular edema and structural changes, associated with central retinal vein occlusion. Finally, let's talk about treatment. The treatment options for central retinal vein occlusion include the following. Intravitreal antivascular endothelial growth factor injections. Medications such as ranibizumab or aflibercept are injected into the vitreous cavity of the eye. These drugs target and inhibit the growth of abnormal blood vessels, reducing macular edema. Intravitreal steroids. In some cases, steroids like triamcinolone acetonide may be injected into the eye to alleviate inflammation and reduce macular edema. Panretinal photocoagulation. When neovascularization occurs, panretinal photocoagulation using laser therapy can be performed. This procedure helps to shrink abnormal blood vessels, prevent their further growth, and reduce the risk of complications. Thank you for listening to this module about central retinal vein occlusion.